Welcome to Energy Talks, a regular podcast series with expert discussions on power system testing topics. My name is Scott Williams from the podcast team at Omicron, and I will be your host. Hello, everyone. In this episode of Energy Talks, we are going to discuss the analysis of on-load tap changers on power transformers. On-load tap changers, also known as OLTCs, are devices fitted onto power transformers that regulate the output voltage to required levels. With the help of the OLTC, the transformer turns ratio can be adjusted under load to deal with voltage fluctuations and maintain a stable voltage level in the electrical grid. To reliably analyze and assess the condition of on-load tap changers, advanced diagnostic tools have been developed, such as the dynamic resistance measurement, which focus on the switching operation of resistor-type OLTCs. Complementary to this approach, however, is the vibroacoustic measurement, also known as VAM or VAM. It records the vibrations produced during the switching operation. My guests in this episode will talk about the origins and development of the vibroacoustic measurement, its benefits over other diagnostic methods, as well as how and when it is performed and how the data is analyzed. With me in this episode to discuss this topic is, first of all, Dr. Karsten Firak. He is the Director of Technology Automation at Maschinenfabrik Rheinhausen in Regensburg, Germany. Dr. Firak, welcome to Energy Talks. Hi, Scott. Nice to be here. Also joining me is Omicron Applications Engineer Christoph Engelin. Christoph was a guest in our episode number 22 about partial discharge testing on cast resin transformers and wind parks. Christoph, welcome back to Energy Talks. Hi, Scott. Great to be here. Thank you both for joining me for this discussion. Dr. Firak, could you tell us about your company, Maschinenfabrik Rheinhausen, and what is your role in the company? Yeah, uh, Rheinhausen is the world market leader in the manufacturing of OTC. That's for the moment the main business together with the service topics. The new upcoming business are mostly data driven, like the embedded transformer uh, operating system, short ETHOS, or fleet scan or TESA uh, as the asset management solutions. Another field are power electronics uh, to improve the power quality in the grid. By myself, I'm responsible for the technology issues in the development of new diagnostic methods based on vibroacoustics and online transformer data. How and when was the vibroacoustic measurement, also known as VAM or VAM, developed? Yeah, vibroanalysis is common practice in different applications, like mechanical uh, assessment of wind turbine rotors. The first investigations were done in the 1990s, and that was bearing monitoring with the acceleration sensors. Uh, but the method was uh, what we use for the tap change investigation is quite different and based on the wavelet transformation of the recorded signal. Which advantages does VAM or VAM offer compared to conventional on low tap changer or OLTC diagnostics? Mm-hmm. Now, the focus of the conventional torque monitoring is the assessment of the tap change and selector movement. Uh, conventional methods are, for instance, a DGA, and that gives us a more integral overview about the OTC con- um, condition. And that's only applicable for the vacuum type OTCs. Also, torque monitoring has only the possibility to have a detailed assessment of the complex diverter switch movement. But with the help of the VIM measurement, a detailed analysis of the diverter switch operation is possible. There might be differentiate in VAM monitoring system, the m VAM, also uh, from MR for the permanent measurement of the vibroacoustic signals and different VAM diagnostics, which means a single measurement with the help of Testrano 600 from Omicron. So the VAM monitoring system, m VAM, is a self-learning system. That's very important here because That means the limit curves adapt themselves regarding to individual OTC characteristics so that limit violations in time and amplitude can be detected. When is it recommended to perform vibroacoustic measurements or VAM? 
Um, now, online VAM monitoring system like MSense VAM is uh, recommended for very important and critical transformers. It offers the recording and analysis of each OTC switching operation. So VAM diagnosis measurements are helpful to analyze the OTC condition during the life cycle of a transformer because of in the increasing age of transformers and the OTC fleet. Um, failure statistics indicate that transformer failures are often related to OTC issues. Okay. Are there any recommendations regarding the time intervals between diagnostic measurements? That should be done uh, to parallel to every main maintenance or diagnostic measure of the transformer every year or every two years. It depends on the rules of the uh, utility. Okay. Dr. Fierak, thank you. We'll come back to you. Christoph, is the application of VAM limited to certain OLTC types? Well, actually, the vibe acoustic measurement can be applied to all types of uh, on-load top changers. Um, depending on the type, you might find that some types, like the vacuum type OTC, give a higher reproducibility in terms of the recorded signals. But it can also be applied, for example, to reactor type OTCs. And this is, for example, in contrast to the dynamic resistance measurement, um, uh, a plus because the, the DRM can typically not be applied to reactor type OTCs. Okay. How are the vibration signals recorded? Um, to pick up the signals, we use uh, piezoelectric sensors, which are mounted on the transformer tank walls or on the OTC cover. And therefore, we use either magnets, um, which are fastened to the transformer tank sides, or in case we want to um, mount the sensors on the OTC cover, we have some sort of screw adapters where the sensors can be placed directly on top of the OTC unit. So if we are talking about diagnostic measurements, the sensors are not permanently installed, but actually removed after the measurement. Okay, do you have to take the transformer out of service to place the sensors? Well, this depends a lot on the position where you where you want to mount the sensors. Um, in case the transformer is in service, of course, the operator or the user is restricted in the positions that you can actually reach um, to, to mount sensors, which means you cannot access the top of the transformer tank uh, due to the high voltage. And um, therefore, if the transformer is in service, you can access only the sides of the transformer tank. In case the transformer is taken out of service, for example, in the course of maintenance uh, interval, then it would be best to also place the sensors directly on top of the OTC, that means on the OTC cover. Are the offline and online results comparable? Um, here again, also the sensor position plays an important role um, and can have great effect on the recorded signals. So in case you can manage to get the same sensor positions for online and offline, um, then yes, it's um, uh, possible to, to compare also online and offline measurement results. And for example, in case of the Testron 600 and the Vibroacoustic module, we can record up to three sensor channels simultaneously, which means one option would be to record one sensor positioned on the OTC cover giving you typically the best um, signal quality and at the same time also record one sensor which is positioned on the transformer tank wall which then acts like a reference for online measurements. Dr. Firak, are the results of your company's monitoring solution and Omicron's diagnostic solution comparable? In general, they are comparable, uh, but we have a higher resolution of course with a diagnostic investigation by, via Testron 600 which helps to get a more detailed insight. Um, the online system generates an envelope and detects limit violations with the help of the stored raw data in the system, in the online system, and detailed analysis is possible too. Okay. How are the results analyzed? In general, the analysis method relies on pattern recognition. That's very important. Therefore, we use an reference data that comes, for instance, from the manufacturer's final test from our side or from the transformer manufacturer or on-site fingerprints. 
Dr. Firak, how is the raw data from the sensor used for the evaluation? Yeah, the post-processing steps of raw data starts in the offline mode with the calculation of a frequency, time, and intensity diagram. Furthermore, with the same data, we want to increase the robustness of the against external influences like noises, like rain or hail. The sensor positioning is also a very important topic. So in the offline mode, the envelope uh, curve is a main feature that we is analyzed. Therefore, MR detects, for example, relevant peaks, measure the time between the peaks and compared with uh, MR unique knowledge about the mechanical and electrical tap change operation. That enables Reinhausen to detect anomalies in the OGC switching operation. For instance, aging and weaking of springs is one of the topic or 40 change over switches. Very good. Okay, thank you. Christoph, how important is the dynamic resistance measurement or DRM when talking about VAM or the vibroacoustic measurement? Well, the dynamic resistance measurement is a well-established um, diagnostic tool to analyze the OTC condition. And I think it's important to point out that DRM and the Vibracoustic are not competing diagnostic tools. Um, they are rather uh, complementary. So with the DRM, um, all operations that have an effect on the current flow will be visible uh, during the switching operation. And for the Vibracoustic, um, all operations that produce some sort of vibrations or, or noise um, are picked up. So in this sense, if you combine the two, um, you get a quite powerful tool to eliminate, let's say, some diagnostic blind spots and um, create a quite complete picture of the whole switching operation. Okay. Dr. Firak, how is Maschinenfabrik Reinhausen involved in this area of analysis? So the creating meaningful diagnosis from the measured vibration signals are really challenging and requires a detailed understanding of the switching sequence of an onload tap changer. But as the leading global manufacturer of onload tap changer, MR and its experts have unique knowledge about uh, that they use to interpret them data very carefully. The VAM analysis service from Reinhausen provides this knowledge from the form of a detailed report with the information of the condition of the onboard tape changer, as well as the handling recommendations. Uh, such a report can be requested quickly and easily by using the MR customer portal. Christoph, which solutions are used for the vibroacoustic measurement or VAM? Um, well, as we have heard from, from Dr. Fierk, there are Two solutions, one from Machine for Kreinhausen in terms of a monitoring solution and one from Omicron. Um, with the monitoring solution, with the M-Sense, M-Sense 1, um, we, we are looking at a permanent installation of sensors, um, mainly for, for the, the most important transformers, um, which analyze all tap switch operations and uh, can detect anomalies and uh, issue some, some warnings or information for the operator. And at the same time, with the Testrano and the yeah, brand new Vibracoustic module, basically, we have now also the chance to incorporate the Vibracoustic measurement in normal diagnostic measurements or maintenance plan. Um, so to create reference uh, curves in the field and track some possible deviations uh, of the OTC during its lifetime. So there are um, a monitoring solution and a diagnostic solution uh, in, in form of the Testerano plus Vibracoustic module, which um, again form more or less a complementary um, solution for the OTC diagnostic. Very good. Thank you. Christoph, where can our listeners get more information about this type of measurement and analysis? Um, regarding the Vibracoustic module, we have some. Um, detailed information about the module itself on our website. Uh, we're also working on some courses and, and webinars regarding this topic. And if you're really interested in performing this measurement and in getting to know the, let's say, best practices, we have prepared also an application note, which uh, provides also a step-by-step -step approach uh, going through each step of, of the whole measurement. Thank you. 
Dr. Firak and Christoph, thank you both very much for sharing your knowledge and experiences with vibroacoustic measurements in this episode of Energy Talks. Thank you very much, too. Thank you, Scott, for having us. Thank you both again for this discussion. And a big thank you to our audience for listening to this episode of Energy Talks. We would really like to know what you think about our podcast and which topics you would like to hear more about in the future. To do this, simply send us an email to podcast at omicronenergy.com. Also, be sure to give us a star review on either Spotify or Apple Podcast. Thank you again for sharing your feedback. Omicron has several years of experience in power system testing and offers you the matching solution for your application. This also includes tap changer analysis on power transformers, which was the topic featured in this episode. For more information, be sure to visit our website at omicronenergy.com. Please join us to listen to the next episode of Energy Talks. Goodbye for now, everyone. Mm-hmm.